Hey everyone and welcome to a Seduce Me episode or after story. This time as you can see on the title screen, it's Eric's time, Eric version. It's called My Princess because yeah, the last episode, last episode in this three, three part, four part series. Yeah, four part series of doing like after stories, extra bonus episodes that's been released after the, the, the Seduce Me 2, the ultimate, Seduce Me 2, the Demon War game. Yeah, so yeah, last episode was freaking goddamn James's episode after story shit. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this time around we're going, we're going to see what's up with Eric. I do not want to speak of James ever again. No, nope, not happening. So we don't need, <laughs> we're going to see what, what Eric's is all about. Hopefully nothing too, too heart attack. So yeah, nah, we're going to start. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, had a little bit of technical issues. Maybe it's because I talk shit about James. But goddamn, I don't need his rudeness all up in Eric's uh, episode this time. Okay, I need some fluffy moments. I need some some doki doki shit going on. None of that other shit. Anyways, when when you're dating someone, you expect surprises. Depending on who you're dating, the surprises can range from a new habit they may have or something they may change how you see them. Okay. When it comes to dating a demon, the possibilities become endless, right? It's all their quirks and their shit, yeah. That's right, I was in love with a demon. The many surprises he showed me yeah. The many surprises he showed me include me include him being an incubus, him having tentacle powers, and him being an ex noble from a large expanding kingdom kingdom. Yes, I didn't think anything could take the cake on top of those things. But there is. There's always it's gonna happen. I was wrong. Yeah, duh. This shit always happens. Ooh! Car! Suddenly in a car, listening to 96.11 Super Station. Yes! Uh, why? Where are we going? I found myself dressed, in, dressed to the nines, sitting in my fiancé's luxury car as we drove into the city of Chicago. I didn't wear fancy clothes often, so feeling the lavish fabrics of the gown I was wearing ag against my skin was almost uncomfortable. So it's like take two of Sam's idea? Is that it? Alright. I still I had to admit when I saw myself in the mirror I was floored at how I looked. I looked hella fun, yes. I was in a beautifully designed red and black dress with matching heels and jeweled accessories. I still would never know how Eric was able to obtain it all, but he gifted the gown, the shoes, and the jewelry to me with a simple smile. He is just he was just being a total like, you know, freak about it. And he like measured our he took our measurements in our sleep. I don't even know. <laughs> A part of me knew that he had made the dress uh, by hand. He owned a custom suit shop and had ac access to the finest fabrics in the city. His skill wasn't limited to suits, however, he could make anything that was deemed as formal wear. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> and as for the shoes and jewelry, I couldn't figure it out and had decided to let it go. He can just look at one of your shoe sizes and just be like, oh, okay, cool, you know? Uh, the drive into the city became one filled with curiosity. Why did I have to be dressed up? Where exactly were we going? Maybe to a nice fancy restaurant. I don't know. Eric? Eric? You here? Yes, my princess. Okay. Alright. Where are you taking- Yeah, where are we going? Where are you taking me? I ch a chuckle escaped Eric's lips as he continued to drive into the night. I told you. It's a surprise. Okay, so obviously it would be, you know, doesn't make sense if he just tells you where it is if it's a surprise. So yeah, we're gonna sit back and we're just gonna relax. We're gonna enjoy this ride. A surprise that requires me to dress up like I'm going to a prom? Well, again, fancy restaurant, okay? Not a prom, exactly. Uh, a gala. I don't know. Eric. Eric. God damn it, tell me. Uh, Eric's smile grew as he lowered a hand from the wheel and took a gentle hold of mine, bringing it to his lips and laying a butterfly kiss over it. I promise you will enjoy yourself. You have my word. Okay, whatever you say. I stared at Eric, a small blush adorning my face at his gentle words and kiss. Giving up at last, I nodded and simply let him guide us further into the heart of the city. Chicago was a beautiful city, especially at night. The lights that illuminated the streets and buildings were a grand sight to behold, and the lively aura of the night's energy that filled every alley and sidewalk was simply enchanting. Yes. You could take me out of Chicago, but you can never take the love of Chicago out of me. Okay, yes. 
To my surprise, the traffic towards our destination was almost non-existent. We were in non-existent. We were in the richest part of Chicago, and at last, we arrived at our destination, one that took me completely off guard. Ooh, are we in a very like nice, rich neighborhood kind of thing? Is that it? Oh, the outside looked like a regular business building. At the very top of the tower was a large sign that said the gateway in bright yellow colors. Okay, something about it stood out somehow, which made me curious. It looks like out of the great Gatsby kind of thing, you know? What was in store in this place? Eric led me out of the car, opening my door for me and escorting me out with a gentle hand. As he closed the door behind me, a man dressed in a bellboy suit rushed up to Eric and held out his hands. Okay. Eric dug his hands in his tuxedo pocket and finally took out a small white envelope, passing it and his car keys uh, to the bellboy. The bellboy took the items and quickly rushed to the driver's side of the car, driving it off like a valet. Uh, that's exactly what it is, a valet. Valet parking! I watched the car head into a nearby parking lot as I unconsciously took Eric's arm. Uh, as I turned back to him, I could tell that I was in for more surprises. He handed me a mask and silently instructed me to put it on as we walked up the steps to the door. It felt like a glove. Oh, so you go you're gonna take me to like a like a, a basically a ball, but it's like a a masquerade. A masquerade. Yeah, that's what it's called. Goddamn, a masquerade. Is it? A pair of bellboys opened the doors for me and Eric, revealing a lavish lobby with a single large pedestal platform in the middle of the room. Stepping up to it, we were stopped by a large woman in a dress suit. Okay. Invitation. Invitation. Yeah. Yo, you got it, Eric. I don't know. I looked at Eric, watching him take out a golden slip of paper from his pocket and pass it to the woman. The guard looked over the parchment before nodding to Eric and stepping away from our path to the pedestal. Okay, where on earth are we going? What is this? <laughs> I remained silent still as we stepped up to the platform and settled in the middle of it, Eric guiding us to stop and stay still in place. Eric nodded to the guard, who simply nodded back and waved her hand in the air. Huh? As she did, the pedestal beneath us uh, suddenly shifted and began to rise into the air. Oh my god, it's an elevator. <laughs> what the hell? Wow. I didn't even know these things existed. <laughs> I gripped Eric tightly as the platform beneath us ascended through the building. All around us were light, were sights of pictures and diamond chandeliers. Whatever this was, I could tell that this was by no means a regular event. No shit. Uh, when we reached the top floor, or what I assumed to be the top floor, we were greeted by a pair of women in waitress suits, bowing to us in respect. As their bird tail feathers and pure black eyes presented themselves to me, I knew that this was... I knew that... I knew then that this was a demon party. Oh, what? Okay. Damn, not even a masquerade. He ain't no basic bitch, but he's taking us to a, a straight out demon party. Oh my gosh. Okay. The doors opened to a large ballroom, one that definitely didn't seem to fit the inside of a suite room. All around were couples and groups mingling and dancing elegantly to the sounds of Victorian style orchestral music. Fancy. I was astonished, even if I. I was astonished even as I was led in by Eric, everyone was dressed in modern formal wear with a range of dresses and tuxedos. It was almost dizzying how much the age of music clashed with the modern fashion of the patrons. Yet I couldn't tear my eyes away from the sight of the guests. Wow. God damn. So fancy. Welcome to a small taste of the demon world, my princess. You could have told me that things like this existed in Chicago, gosh. The guests were all demons, some with horns, some with tails, and the rest with an assortment of different looks. It was a conglomerate of people, and I felt a bit out of place as someone who looked obviously human. Well, you can just put on that damn mask, and you can just blend right in. It's all good. As we stepped further into the space, a voice tripped out. Eric, my boy! Come fly over here, will you? Fly over- fly over- not even just come over here, just fly over- fly your ass over here! <laughs> okay! I looked over to see a bird man with a polished tuxedo wave us over with a very handsome gentleman with mouse ears on his arms. Despite the nerves running through my system, Eric and I walked over. As Eric bowed his head, I, qu I quickly curtsied. Oh, so you must be like the host, I assume. For some reason, the way the birdman carried himself made him seem like a prince. I was in awe of his gorgeous tail feathers and beak accented, accented by the lavish suit he wore. Connor, you look splendid. I assume you approve of your tuxedo? Connor. Like, ah. <laughs> approve? I absolutely love it. Ricardo here won't let go of me because of it. <laughs> oh, Dan. Aren't you the cutest? 
Okay, I looked over at the mouse man, whom I assumed to be Ricardo, as he smiled coyly and hugged Connor's arm tight, nodding in agreement at, of Connor's words. I, I smiled a bit as Eric laughed. Very good. Well, thank you for inviting us to your anniversary celebration. Uh, it is an honor to be in such company. Ah, uh, that's cute. Okay, it's a, I, why didn't you tell me it's gonna be an anniversary party? I would have bought a gift or some shit. God. Nonsense. Thank you for attending. As the son of the most powerful demon in the Abyssal Plains, it's only proper to invite you regardless. My only regret is not inviting your brothers. I must seem so rude. Nah, they got better shit to do. <laughs> I'm sure. Eric waved his hand dismissively. Think nothing of it. We actually denounced our titles when we came to this world. Yeah, yeah. You don't say. Well, good on you. You do such fabulous work as a designer here. It's no wonder that your suit shop is unmatched. He's so successful. Aww. Connor finally turned his gaze. Ah. Uh, but Connor finally turned his head to me and cocked it in curiosity. I felt a bit small under his gaze, but smiled respectfully back. Hi! <laughs> and who might this lovely lady be? A human? Yes, tis I, a human! <laughs> Eric nodded and lifted my hand to his lips, kissing it respectfully before our conversation, uh, our conversation partners, yes. This is my wonderful princess. I asked her to accompany me tonight to show her how elegant a demon ball can be. Yes, this is actually really nice, though. Nice place. How marvelous! I rarely get to meet humans. It is an absolute delight to meet you. Oh, me too, yeah. <laughs> Connor held out his hand towards me, making me place my hand in it out of manners. Instead of kissing my hand, he lifted it to his beak and very gently nipped a couple of times at the back of it, making me giggle a bit. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> oh that, that's cute. It's a pleasure to meet you too, yes. Connor released my hand and smiled at me before looking back at Eric. Well, Eric, princess, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Please enjoy the ball. Dance and eat as much as you like. Will do. Where, okay, where the drinks at? I want me some booze. We shall. Thank you. Okay. Alright, with that, Eric and I walked away from Connor and Ricardo, both of whom were waving at us before turning to find new conversation partners. Okay. So this is a demon ball, yes. Yes, princess. You've been curious about what life was like for me in the demon world, yes? Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> I nodded, I was indeed curious about Eric's life in the demon world, but I didn't expect him to give me an experience. This was completely out of the blue. Eric gestured to the room where the couples of the dance floor were waltzing in sync. It was memorizing. Mesmerizing, yes. Well, this is a perfect representation of how Demon Royal celebrated. We had elegant balls filled with dancing and food, and they would only end when the sun came up. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think I have I don't think I have the energy to stay up all night though. I'm like I'm kinda getting old. <laughs> Uh, really? I thought the demon world was like the Dark Ages. This seems like a fairy tale ball, but not really, not really medieval. Well, it's it's a bit of a mix. Okay, come on. Eric chuckled and walked with me around the dance floor, continuing his explanation. <laughs> the demon world may be stuck in the Dark Ages, but we do take inspiration from the human world. Your fairy tales inspired our celebrations. Dang. Okay, that was nice. Nice to hear. I couldn't stop staring at the dancers and the demons in the room. Uh, there were so many people dressed up like royalty that I felt almost underdressed. There were some glance there were some glances my way, but none that were none with ill intent. Okay, cause we're all just here to party, right? God, we're all here to have a good time. It was probably natural since I was a human in a room full of demons. Yes. Sally slyly Eric led me onto the dance floor and began to waltz with me to the music. We remained outside of the crowd dancing to our own beat and sways as the rest of the dancers kept up in time and step with the synchronized dancing. Okay. So instead of getting phones and computers, you got balls and dresses. Yep. <laughs> you are correct. The demon world has no need for computers or phones, but new traditions of celebration are always welcomed. Okay. I see. No raves or clubs, right? Oh my god, how bomb would it be to have like a demon nightclub or some shit like that? Oh my god, I'd be, to I'd be so down. I would be so down to get turned. Too human for our taste. Oh, <laughs> you're no fun then. You don't know how to party. <laughs> no light shows or DJs? Not even that? Not even gonna get lit? Not gonna get turned? No? 
that would require electricity, my princess, which we don't care to use. To us, it's a waste of energy. Okay, whatever. I guess I'll just you'll just leave the partying up to us humans then. God, I should t I should take you to like a nightclub or some shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> I pursed my lips at Eric as he slowly began to ease us into the crowd. I barely noticed the dancers moving aside and stopping their dances to stare at us as I locked eyes with Eric, continuing the conversation. Do demons have balls often? I guess so. Unfortunately, no? no. Okay. Hosting celebrations take a large amount of resources, so we save balls for only the most grand of occasions. Okay, makes sense. All right, no party twenty-four-seven. Uh -huh. Like birthdays? Demons don't celebrate birthdays, princess. However, we celebrate the peaceful uniting of kingdoms or the crowning of a new ruler. Okay. All right. All right. I became fascinated, even as Eric began to twirl me around and add elaborate steps into the dance between us. We both focused on each other as we let the world around us fade into a blurred outline of people and decor. However, the human world has provided demons here the means to celebrate many more things. Exactly. <laughs> Party on. Like Connor's anniversary, yes. Eric nodded and, dip and dipped me for a moment, staring deep into my eyes. Exactly. Mm hmm Okay. Got it. Got you. Ah, I held on to Eric's memor I held on to Eric mesmerized in his lovely purple eyes. I squeezed his hand gently and caused him to lift me back up and hold me close in a loving embrace. And one day, I would love to hold an elegant ball for our union. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm down, Eric. Da, Eric. My face began to glow a soft rosy red as I smiled up at my prince. I loved him with every ounce of my being, and a fairy tale wedding and ball seems like a perfect way to celebrate. No, right. But let me just make one thing clear though. Open bar and a DJ, okay? It's a must. I need to have those. <laughs> I stretched up onto my toes and kissed Eric ever so gently before pulling away with a giggle. I would love that. DJ and open bar though. It would be perfect. Eric stared at me in surprise for a moment before chuckling and nuzzling his head against mine, a playful but loving smirk against his lips. My beautiful princess, I am yours forever. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and I am yours, my prince charming. And the night became one of fairy tale and dance, fairy tale dancing, and a seemingly happy ever after for me and my demon prince. Da, ah, see, this is the kind of healing I need. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was cute. That was cute. I figured from like the title of it, it's like yeah. My princess, and of course, Eric being who he is, is like just a doting and loving boyfriend. Not to say that, you know, James isn't, but you know, he's a little bit more on the kinkier side, but whatever. Whatever, to each their own. So yeah, there's that. We have Eric's episode, little after story, or... Okay, I don't even want to call it an after story. It's more like an in-between. <laughs> in-between of events, because this is way before either of them actually started planning the wedding which is what was happening in seduce me too so yeah whatever it's still very sweet and it's still i like bonus extra materials like this oh yeah so anyways yeah that's all so yeah that concludes uh eric's episode unfortunately we don't have damien's or matthew's yet apparently it's still in the making but we still got diana's but diana's a prologue so that should be interesting but that is for the next episode so until then bye